This is Support is Sexy, episode 518. How to bounce back from rock bottom with gratitude. Welcome to Support is Sexy. I'm your host, Elaine Fluker, entrepreneur, author, and founder of Chic Rebellion Media. Five days a week, Monday through Friday, I bring you inspiring women entrepreneurs who share their wins and lessons to help you take your business to the next level. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Support is Sexy. I'm so happy to have you here. It just would not be the same without you. And we are continuing our series of rewinds. So looking back of some of the powerful episodes from Support is Sexy from the past couple of years that we've been doing the podcast. This is giving me an opportunity to make sure that you continue to be fed and inspired while I take some space, do some traveling, and then come back in with you in August and give you all new episodes. So today's episode is featuring comedian Kim Coles, who was actually on episode 295 originally back in August 2017. So almost a year ago, actually just about a year ago. Kim is hilarious. First of all, she's a comedian. She was a superstar on the show Living Single. She's an actress. But in this episode, she gets very real and talking about the struggle after the show Living Single was canceled, how she struggled financially, how she struggled personally, how she went through a deep depression. You know, it's real when we're flying high and then that thing goes away that was so important to you. You have to manage how you move on from that point, whether that's in business, your personal life and so on. Kim talks about how she bounced back, but not only bounced back, how she did it with intentional gratitude. So I know you're going to enjoy this episode. It's a great reminder. Focus on gratitude. So now, without further ado, Kim Coles. So Kim, I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for being on Support is Sexy. Thank you so much, Elaine. And what I haven't told you yet is that my mother's middle name is <gasps> Elaine. Oh, so I-, I love that. <laughs> I have a, a, an attachment to that to that name. So Excellent. thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. My pleasure. So first question, when did you first fall in love with entrepreneurship? Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I fell in love with it when I thought I became one. And I'll explain. I thought I became an entrepreneur in around 2009, 2010, when I discovered the internet and mm-hmm. um, marketing online and marketing your business or your coach or your coaching or your speaking or whatever you, you market online. So I thought I was an entrepreneur then. But I realize now, Elaine, that I've been as an actor, I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur. As an actress and a comedian and an author, that is entrepreneurship at its best um, because it's I'm I'm a free agent. I work for myself. Um, sometimes I work for you know ABC or NBC or Fox, uh, but most of the time I'm working for myself. Kim Coles is my brand, mm-hmm. and I realize I've been the CEO of a brand Kim Coles, and I was aware of that, but I didn't take that on as a oh oh snap. I, I'm showing my age by saying, oh, snap. That's fine. I, do, oh. I say that too. I say snap and dope and all that stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't take that on as a, oh, snap, dope experience <laughs> until, I, until about 2010, I would say. So um, I hope I answered the question. I have a tendency to answer questions that haven't even been answer, answered, but I embrace it um, because it's, it's about um, – Control, and I don't mean control as in holding on to something. It's about embracing the power and the control of being an entrepreneur and being able to make many decisions on your own. What was it um, that you feel happened in 2010 that sort of caused you to have that shift around the idea of I'm an I'm an entrepreneur or someone who has you know control over her own. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you what it is. I had gone through a really difficult time up until then. Like 2007 was just before the crash for everybody else, Mm -hmm. but I crashed in 2007. And I say that to say that after leaving Living Single, uh, after the show got canceled, I went through a really difficult time and a really, actually a depression, let's call it what it is. Mm -hmm. Lost my mojo. And 
I knew that I had something else left inside of me, but I thought like, I, you know, cause especially after you've been on a hit show, you don't, it's really hard to reach higher than that right after that. Very few people do that right after I worked some, but nothing I did, everything I did paled in comparison is what I should say. So anyway, I, I sort of went into a deep depression and we can talk more about that, about, you know, having going into financial ruin. Um, and what that means is I shopped all my money away Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't making enough to replace it. Uh, so there, there you have that. And it was starting to, you know, I, I came to a place of healing by coming to a place of gratitude, which we'll talk about. Gratitude is a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. And I, do for all of us. And through that process of coming through gratitude and coming through asking myself, what are my gifts? What can I do? Even if I'm not on a TV show is, 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 is if it's over, if that's over, what else can I do? And beginning to look at the internet as a way to go, okay, well, number one, I would say I started speaking. I started just sharing my story of coming through a difficult time and how I came out of it. And sometimes I finished crying five minutes before I went on stage to mm. speak to people. Um, and I think that um, I've, I've really came to embrace it and understand it when I started playing online and playing with what I could build and how I could keep myself relevant and ready while waiting for a TV show and relevant and ready despite booking another TV show. And so that's when I fell in love with entrepreneurship. I found people who were doing similar things or, or, or who were teaching things that I could use to keep myself relevant. And I think that's what we all want. I don't necessarily need to be famous. I just want to be significant. I mm-hmm. want to have I want to have, uh, I want to serve, I want to share from my gifts and help other people find theirs. And so I don't have to be in a sitcom to do that. There's a thousand other ways I can do it. So that's the long answer to your question. No, that's a great answer. And thank you so much for sharing, you know, so openly that part of your journey. It's interesting. That was one of my questions about living single, which ran for five seasons from 93 to 98, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I was going to ask you what it what it was like, which you just um, mentioned going from it was a huge show, uh, mm-hmm. hit show, huge show, impactful show. And going from that to whatever's next, feeling the pressure for the quote unquote next big thing. And you just spoke yeah. to sort of having that that feeling. So you mentioned that you were able to come through that time. What were some of the things that you did in order to help you through that transition? <laughs> Um, well, I had to fall all the way down. And for me, all falling all the way down was being very depressed, uh, shopping myself out of everything I had, Mm -hmm. really getting down to what I like to call the last mortgage payment, the last house note, and the last hair weave. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) The reason why I tell that part of the story is because the truth is somebody would let me sleep on their sofa if I lost my home. Somebody would give me a ride and we don't really have a a very strong, um, um, this is before Lyft and Uber and all that, you know, there's a very strong, even public transportation system in LA. So somebody would give me a ride, but if I couldn't get my hair done, then that was tragic. Right. And so, um, I, I really went into a terrible depression. Like I said, I really got to that place of even considering um, suicide. Um, I just thought I'm, I, I'm not worthy. I don't belong here. Nobody wants me. I didn't have a man. I didn't have a job. I, just whatever all that is. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was actually gratitude that brought me back. It was actually a, a great therapist mm-hmm. and, uh, and an article that I found in Oprah Magazine. And the article was by a woman named Susie Welch, who has a book of the same name. The name was 10, 10, 10. I have it on my bookshelf, but for me to get up and go get it now would mean interrupting the interview. I don't want to do that. But it's called 10, 10, 10, something like um, how to, you know, ways to look at your life or, or solve problems or something. And this is, I'll just give it to you in a nutshell. Susie Welch suggests that you should look at any challenge or any problem that you have through the lens of what would happen if I made this decision or that decision, what would happen in 10 years or 10 months or 10 weeks. 
like you just look at the future, the outcome of the decision that you made. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm sitting in this den and I'm depressed and I'm having suicidal thoughts and I'm running out of money, I remember saying to myself, so you can sit in this den for another 10 minutes and it won't affect the rest of your life. It's in fact, it's almost nighttime. Just go ahead and go to bed. You can sit here for another 10 hours if you want to to and wallow in your grief and your pain that you're not working and you don't know who you are anymore. You've lost your mojo. But you can't do this in 10 weeks. You can't do this in 10 more days. You can't do certainly in 10 more years. And so focusing on what my future could look like if I continued to stay in this space was enough to shock me out of out of that, it at least put me in a new mind frame. It at least put me in the frame of saying, and now it's time to get some help. Mm-hmm. I gave myself that other 10 minutes, and I think I went to bed and spent, you know, you know, spent another 10 hours being depressed. And then I gave myself a, an hour of just saying what would happen if I got some help, and I did. Mm-hmm. And gratitude is the thing that helped me. I found this therapist who was spirit, spiritual-based or spirit-based. And she said, I want you to start keeping a gratitude journal to which I thought it was the most ridiculous thing. Like, don't you, didn't you hear me tell you I'm depressed? I got to fix this, please. (laughs) Right. She said, keep a gratitude journal for 30 days, write five things every day that you are grateful for and just watch what happens. And day by day, minute by minute, I started feeling better and better and better. And not at first. At first, I, I love to tell people I cheated. Like I would write, eh, I'm, I'm happy for the five fingers on my left hand. I'm happy for the five fingers on my right hand. I'm grateful, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, the next few days, you have to start being grateful for your parents. You have to start being grateful for your baby brother. You have to start being grateful for the sun that shines. You have to start being grateful. And all of a sudden, I found myself being less blue and more grateful for what still was there. The truth is, I didn't lose my house. I still had a house over a roof over my head. The truth was, I still had food to put in my belly. I still had friends who loved me. I still had my talent. I still had my intellect. I still had my heart. And all these other amazing things that no matter what state that you're in, there is still still something to be grateful for. And expressing that, I think what happens is God says, okay, okay, you like the sunshine I sent you today and you like the five fingers on your left hand. Wait till you see what I'm going to send you tomorrow. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you, you're, you're grateful that, you know, you have a, you know, a stale piece of uh, bread to eat today. I'm going to send you something else tomorrow. Are you grateful for that? Wait, do you see what I got for you? I really think that happened for me because at the end of the 30 days, I kept going with this. And, you know, people always ask me, were residual checks coming in at that time? And they were, but I would go and shop them away. Mm. And I remember I received a residual check that was enough to keep my home, enough to keep my car, enough to get my hair done, and enough for me to say I'm not going to go shopping this time. Not this time. Mm-hmm. And it shifted things for me. It shifted the trajectory I was on. And um, and I started saying, if I'm going through this, then other people must be going through this. And that's what I meant when I said sometimes I – was crying five minutes before I went on a speaking engagement or I'm going to say this to anyone who's listening, who thinks that they have to be a guru sitting on top of the mountain before they can lead and serve and help. And the truth is I think we lift as we climb. And I was sometimes climbing up the mountain and saying, I just learned something five minutes ago that shifted me. And I want you to learn it too. come on along with me. Let's let's, I'm going to lift you as I climb. Mm -hmm. And that was the thing that shifted everything for me. And the quote that I believe is Zig Ziglar's, who says, you can have anything you want if you help, help people. people get but they, That's yeah. right. Yeah. And I remember going like, oh, so I can't be selfish anymore. Like, I can't think that this is all about me not being on a TV show no more. You mean I got to go out and help other people? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And, it worked, and it worked. And I've been doing that ever since. Wow. And so I see this, you know, it's about um, learning to receive and it's learning to give in a fresh new way. And would I love to be on another TV show? Yes, I would. I had an audition just the other day. Mm. Um, had some other jobs. I mean, not everything sort of pales in comparison to Living Single because it's Living Single. It was an iconic show. But I've even stopped comparing 
it to things. It right. just it stands on its own as this beautiful, yummy thing, and maybe something else will come along that will be equal or better. But that does that's not what matters. What matters is I found my self. I'm on a journey to find my best self, and I am really adamant about and really passionate about helping others find their gifts in in various ways and and unlocking that unlocks everything you need for life that's like the secret of life i feel like i've found the the thing Mm -hmm. because i'm on a quest to find that thing and so much more Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. And there's so many lessons in there. So let me see if I can remember one of the things I want to make sure to highlight about the gratitude practice, as you mentioned, which is so powerful for the people who, as just as you said, you were in the beginning, were sort of skeptical about it. I try to tell people the power of it isn't just in the gratitude, or at least I believe, but it, it really shifts your thinking so that you focus more on the things that you have to be grateful for. Yes. Do you think that? Yeah. So it's not okay. like it's this magical thing that I'm going to say thank you for this, you know, piece of candy. And all of a sudden, there's going to be an abundance of candy. It's <laughs> just shifting from the things that you can be miserable about, which might still be there and shifting yeah. your focus to this yummy piece of candy is something to be grateful for. So for people listening, just to know, this, as you mentioned, maybe you are skeptical about it, but try it, go through the practice. And it's a practice, right? You have to continue to do it. Yes. Yeah. Continue and to do it. Yeah, the magic is here's here's where I found the magic. I started looking for things to be, be great. For. Right. So, right. Because I have this task of five things every day. Mm-hmm. I was, and I start and she said, You and don't repeat anything. I'm like, man, after you after you grateful for your fingers and your toes and your eyelashes and your you know, your teeth and you know, right. like out of stuff to I said I need, I need to look for it. and when you go looking for it it's about the perspective mm-hmm. and it's starting your day off going I'm expecting joyful miracles kindness smiles from other people abundance money health I'm expecting you go into life uh, uh, having that positive expectancy mm-hmm. and, and therefore more shows up because it's already there. Right. So that, that delicious piece of candy you're eating, there's so much more candy in the world mm-hmm. and so much more because you're looking for it. Like I had a delicious piece of candy and I'm so grateful for that piece of candy. And you look around and like, there's, there's, there's so much more to be seen, to be had, to be, to be, to be hold. And then to be sharing with others. And I think, too, um, in in mentioning about being on Living Single and the period that you went through after that, for some people, it's not a hit show, but maybe it's the big job that you had that's no longer there or the marriage that is, you know, no longer there. And you're sort of thinking, how am I going to move on past this or beyond this? So for people to think about that, you know, we have these moments or seasons. I just went through this. And um, as I mentioned to you before the show, living in being from New York, living in Brooklyn, loving it, and then moving to Atlanta. Now being back here, I realize how much I miss it. But I'm making sure that I don't get caught up in, you know, sort of glamorizing the experience or longing for the experience of the past of being here. That was great. It was for a season and something else, better, more new, interesting is to come. So for for people listening to remember that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And another thing you mentioned, because you said so many wonderful things, Kim, I'm keeping (laughs) notes here, as you can see. Another thing that you said that is crucial, important for all of us, for all women, and especially women of color who forget to do this, the importance of seeking support, which is what we're all about, getting help. Listen, it's so important. And we, I don't know where we got off thinking that we had to do it ourselves, Mm -hmm. all by ourselves. I don't know where that came from. It might be worthwhile um, investigating that. I don't know if it's part of the culture, culture. To, mm-hmm. not to tell anybody your business. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows anyway, they see you, they see how you, how you, how you doing. Right. I don't know if it's that, I don't know if it's the, the myth of the strong black woman. Now I'm not saying she doesn't really exist and she does exist in you and in me and in, in all of our sisters that are listening, but the strong black woman, there's that, puts out an energy of I have to do it by myself I need to stand by myself and I won't be strong unless I stand on my own right or for it to count I have to do it alone I think in the age of social media there's that too 
Yes. And I was a victim of that as well. And I find that um, you are stronger together. Mm -hmm. Um, You are stronger when you have collaboration. You bring something to the table. I bring something to the table. Now there's more on the table. Right. (laughs) <laughs> I have really in my, the last few years, I have really gotten into this um, collaboration, not competition thing and forming incredible, you know, they call it biz besties. Now your business besties, you know, these girls who, and I see, a, I see a lot of millennials doing it. I love it. These girls who like the, maybe one girl is like sort of a copywriter and maybe another girl is like a, like a, you know, a branding specialist. And then they band together and create webinars and, and courses and books and experiences. And they are stronger the sum of the, what is the phrase? The, the sum of the two the is... Sum of the, uh, now I lost it. Sum is, yeah. The sum is greater than the, the sum the of sum all of parts. The, I have to yeah. Google it now, Kim. <laughs> the sum of parts are greater than the whole or something. <laughs> and there's nothing, actually it shows extreme strength to reach out and say, I need help. Um, because, and this is something that someone taught me too, that you have no idea how much you are blessing the person who is willing to help you. It may be that they were supposed to help you with something and that's part of their journey. And so I do a shout out to all the strong black sisters and yes, we could do it for ourselves. We could do it all by ourselves. There's no doubt. We don't have to. We don't have to. And it makes you exhausted. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was at a, um, a seminar and the the person in charge was talking about that. And this is going to be a little radical, but I'm going to go here. She suggested that it's very possible that women are having, oh, this is going to be so radical. I hope you can edit it out if you want to. No, go for it. But she, her thing was, she feels that women, that part of the problem, the the possibility of the problem of our infertility issues may have to do with that energy of thinking we have to do it all we have to be it all we have to have it all we have to you know we have to be you know be a you know a, a boss lady in the in the cor- in the you know in the corporate environment we have to be a super woman at home we have to be a super duper mom we have to be the best wife ever we have to be the best cook ever and like all of this doing 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 is actually causing um just shifts in our DNA and in our body and in our systems because we're supposed to be receivers. And she just says that I just, I don't wonder if the lack of sleep and the working too hard and the get, 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 get is causing us as women to have our health be at at risk and in particular our fertility be at risk. Mm -hmm. A little bit radical. I yeah, don't want to. Th- exactly. No, it is. Thanks for mentioning that. I think, um, of course, I'm no doctor, but I will say, I I do believe that be, with all of the things that you mentioned about superwoman here, I always say we need to retire the superwoman cape. But superwoman right. here, and superwoman in the bedroom, and superwoman at work, and all that stuff, it leads to stress. And stress is the cause of a lot of things, including, I don't know if infertility, but people, uh, unfortunately, having miscarriages and all these other kind of problems. So I do think in that way, I could see there being a connection there. But I I agree, too, that, you know, we're all supposed to be we're uh, tribal people, all of us as human beings. Right. And supposed to be connected. And again, as we mentioned, this idea of doing things on your own, I'm very passionate about my saying for support is sexy is having it all doesn't mean doing doing it all alone. Yes. Oh, I love that. Right. Love- so, so yes, I'm, I'm, I love talking about that and just pushing all of us and women, especially because as we mentioned, this superwoman ideal and being a boss and being flawless and I'm exhausted. I need some help. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. I, I, to say, I still wear my superhero, super shero cape, uh-huh. but I take it off and make it a blanket every once in a while. Let me- <laughs> Other people come under it. <laughs> cover myself up and take a little nap right. and then spread it out and, and, and have a picnic on it. So I like to do other things with my superwoman Kate. That's right. And, um, and, and here's the, here's the other thing about it. There's something that you do Elaine way better than me. Why shouldn't I 
employ your help to go, you know what, girl, you are so good at X, Y, Z. Can you help me by doing X, Y, Z? And I'll give you A, B, C. And together we've created the alphabet or, or whatever it is. I think we're stronger together. So, um, so thank you for carrying that message forward. And thank you for being embodying that message. I think it needs to be heard more and more and more. Absolutely. Now that book, I looked it up and I'll make sure for everyone listening, I have a link to it. 10, 10, 10, as you said, a fast and powerful way to get unstuck in love at work and with your family. Boom. There you go. Everything through 10. And I adjusted, I think hers was, you know, 10 weeks, 10 months, 10 years. Like I was at critical mass. Mm -hmm. I needed 10 minutes ahead to go how am I going to even survive the next 10 minutes and so it was really powerful so yes thank you so much for linking that thank you of course and another thing you mentioned too um and what you said earlier about this idea of us waiting until we're an expert in something before we share our story and our experiences and that kind of thing. Something a friend of mine has said that I repeat often, I give him credit sometimes um but he (laughs) says um you're an expert of your own experiences Absolutely. Right? I yeah. love that. Yeah. So many of us are waiting until we're, you know, whatever the guru status is. I don't even know how you get that. But until we are called a guru, or as you said, or other things before we share the power of our own stories. Mm-hmm. And you have no idea how you, how much you can empower, um, you know, enlight, empower, educate and, and help someone, illuminate something for someone who may be going through the same thing as you. And, you know, I would tell my story, and it sounded like a Hollywood story, mm-hmm. but y- just like you did a few minutes ago, it, everyone has a moment of loss, mm-hmm. a, a, a moment where they thought they were supposed to have something and they had something else or they were removed from something or something was removed from them or they had to, to go someplace else to get something. And that's the journey of life. And... I thought it was a Hollywood story and I had many people come and hug me and go, you just told my story. You know, you just like, you know, bill collectors calling my house. Well, that happens for a whole lot of people. Mm-hmm. In my case, they knew who I was because my name really is Kim Coles. So <laughs> I've had bill collectors go, is this Sinclair? And I go, yeah, <laughs> I'm broke. Mm-hmm. And I never forget I, that helped. I, I no longer fear any bill collector ever calling my house ever again, because I remember more than one would say to me, don't be ashamed of your situation. I'm working here part time because I got some bills to pay. Mm -hmm. I was like, thank you. Thank you. So we all go through it in this beautiful human experience. And you do not have to be all the way on the top um, to share your story. And I really believe that you don't even have to share your, I know there's so many of us who don't want to share our story. Like they want to keep secrets or, or sometimes your story involves someone else. It would be outing someone as Mm -hmm. an abuser or outing someone as not kind. And I do think there are ways to share your story without sharing all your business. Um, I actually have a a couple of courses in which I help people tell their story. I'm really big on people telling their story, whether it's as a speaker or as a presenter, or in your case, you know, as a, you know, having this wonderful podcast, I think when we share our stories, we have other people witness us Mm -hmm. and other people permission to be all right in their own stories. And so I'm very, I'm just, I'm just very passionate about that. So too. how do we find out about uh, the courses? Are there something, is there something I can link to for that as well for people who are interested in finding out more? Yes. Um, the page uh, is not quite linked right now, but the, 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 it is called my story is my gift. Mm-hmm. And I will get that linked back up again so that it will work properly. Cause I, what I do is I don't launch it until I'm ready to launch it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called My Story is My Gift, and I have another course called, um, uh, no, well, there's My Story is My Gift, and then there's Speak Your Gifts. And I have a thing about the word gift, <laughs> obviously. We're going to talk about that. I have a question have a on that. <laughs> a book called Open Your Gifts. So Speak uh-huh. Your Gifts, Speak Your Gifts, and My Story is My Gift. And uh, probably, depending on when this begins airing, I will uh, have that all linked up for people. Or I always, yeah. Or you can go to my website, Mm kimcoles.tv and that will 
all the information will all be there as well. Okay, excellent. So mm-hmm. now speaking about open the gifts, is open the gifts or open your gifts? It's actually open your gifts, but open there is your a, gift. there's open the gifts too, but that's another story. Right. Open that's, I saw gifts. the video of open the gifts where you talked yes. about what gifts stood for. So tell us yes. about that. So gifts is actually what came out of my depression when I came. So when I was freshly healed and I don't know that we're all ever, ever healed. Everything is a journey. But when I really got it together, I decided to, I realized I was so busy looking for my gift out there. My gift I thought was a TV show. And I realized that my gift is what's inside of me. And in exploration and in therapy, I found that my gift is love and laughter. And my other gift is reminding others that they have gifts inside of them. And so I decided to make gift an acronym. And the acronym is gratitude, intention, forgiveness, triumphs, and self-love. G-I-F-T-S. Now, gratitude being the first piece, which we've already talked about, having a gratitude practice is key to finding what's inside of you and living your best life. The I is for intention, which I like to call spiritual to-do list. And intention is just who you be. And yes, I know I said it that way. Mm-hmm. Who you be and who you intend to be. And also getting in an in inspired action in your life. If there's something that you want, something that you desire, something that you need in your life, you have to take action towards it, but it has to be inspired towards what you really want. Just kind of like that 10, 10, 10 thing. When I put my eye on my future, I need to take some action in order for that future to happen the way I'd like it to. So that's the I. The F is for forgiveness, which I need to do quite a bit of that work uh, at the time. And we all need to forgive past old, hurt, pain, things that don't work and work for you anymore. I love saying I forgive my crazy ex-husband and I forgive myself for marrying him because I was crazy too. (laughs) Right. And then forgiving yourself for any so-called mistakes. And I am making air quotes right now, mistakes that you feel that you made in your life because they weren't mistakes. What if they were just lessons? What if they were just, you know, stepping stones to the lessons that you need to have? So forgiveness is huge. The T is for triumphs, and that's all about celebrating yourself where you are, celebrating your achievements, how big or how small doesn't matter, taking time to celebrate yourself or, uh, as I like to say, bake yourself a cake, put your candles on it, and blow your candles out yourself. Celebrate yourself. Mm -hmm. And the S is for self-love, which is what this is really all about. All of it is all about self-love, and it's all about taking great care of yourself and treating yourself as if you are your own best friend. So I believe if you look at those pillars or those key elements, you will start to unlock your gifts as well. Yes. And you have a a journal too, a gratitude journal that you've created around gifts, right? So that's my first self-published book Mm -hmm. called, called the gratitude journal. And you can get that at OpenTheGifts.com. And what it really is, is it's, it's, it's a little bit of a journal, but also a little bit of me sharing my experience and then sharing, showing you how you can get your own experience, how you can begin to create your own gratitude journal. It's just, it's, it's just it really is the beginning of everything. Just be grateful for what you already have and other abundance will, will present itself to you as we talked about. And then I have a new book called open your gifts in which it's an anthology with 22 other women, all explaining how they found their gifts in their lessons. Mm. And let me say this. I think I look at gifts in three different ways. It's the gifts you have inside of you that you were your divine gifts, like the gifts that God, when you were born said, and now you will have this and this and this go forth my child Mm -hmm. and, and, and do and be that. And then there's, uh, the gifts that the gifts and the lessons, like the challenges, the, the funky stuff. I go, I go the yucky stuff that you can turn into yummy stuff by looking at the lessons that you came through the challenges, you know, how you became a survivor, how you, um, came through the lessons that you learned, the, the, even the most difficult stuff you go, why did this happen to me? It happened to you because you're supposed to help 
heal it for yourself and help heal it for others. Which brings me to the third piece of the gift is the gift that you give away. It's, it's what you've learned, the advice, the wisdom, the, 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 the warnings that you have within you that you now share with others to help them on their journey. And so that's my three pronged approach around the, you know, the experience of having a gift and being a gift and giving your gift away. Do you feel like our gifts can evolve over time? So for example, with you, did you always know that you wanted to be a comedian and an actress when you were growing up? Or is that something that developed later? And then now, of course, you're doing something uh, still in- incorporating your comedy and, and mm-hmm. acting or delivery to people in your speaking. But do you feel like your gifts have evolved from who you were before and who you are now? They have. And actually, my sense of humor, okay, I grew up watching great comedians on on TV. I was a fan of Carol Burnett and Lucille Ball. And when I found Whoopi Goldberg, I've absolutely fell in love. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, Richard Pryor and, you know, Moms Mabley, Marsha Warfield and and just I I keep going and going and going. All the great. Where did you grow up? In Brooklyn. You grew up in Brooklyn? (laughs) I'm from Brooklyn, I'm from Flatbush. You what? are not. I did not know. I'm glad I asked. Oh, okay. All right, girl. Oh, yes, yes. So when you mentioned Brooklyn just now, I was going to ask you where, where, where you, where did you live? I was in um, Bed-Stuy. Most yes. Recently. Yes, on Stuyvesant. Now, haven't they changed the name of Bed-Stuy? Isn't it like Stuyvesant Heights Parts or something? Parts of it is supposed to be Stuyvesant uh-huh. Heights. Whatever. It's yeah. still the Sty. <laughs> I cannot with the new Brooklyn. It's way too fancy for me. Exactly. I'm from Slapbush myself. And so, um, well, I'll say this too. Also growing up in Brooklyn, you'll understand this is such a colorful, wonderful place. I, you know, you, you could walk down the street and walk through several countries. Right. Your way to the Several D-train. languages. Exactly. Yes. Yes. I grew up eating different kinds of food and being able to say different words in different languages and being able to curse in different languages. It's just a rich culture. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I grew up around that, but not really funny myself until I got to high school. And it was actually um, a survival technique. Um, I was a, a fluffy little girl. I was a chubby little girl. And well, I should I take that back. I got fluffy and in my teens, like from like 12 on, I started gaining weight. And I remember looking at the landscape of, of high school going, Oh, this is not going to, the fat girl never has a good time in high school. She don't, she does. This is not going to bode well for me. I'm going to be called fat. They're going to tease me. And so I thought if I make them laugh with me instead of at me, then I can turn this all around. And so I did. I would tell funny jokes and put M&Ms in my nose and do funny walks and talk in those funny accents that I had heard on the way to the D train going to school every day. You know, Mm -hmm. so I'm a pretty good mimic and I can hear accents and I could imitate things. And I absolutely won friends and influenced people by being funny. So it was natural. It must have been in me. My mother is very funny and I get it from her, but I didn't start expressing it until high school. And I dropped in and out of college about a thousand times. And one of those times I dropped out of college, I entered into a beauty pageant for plus size women. I was like, let's make this work for me. And they called me and said, we're going to have a talent competition in the beauty pageant. And I didn't know what I was going to do. And so I made up a comedy routine about beauty pageants and I won first runner up. Mm. And that's the night that I discovered that I should be doing stand up. I was like, Oh my goodness, I, this is it. I love this. So it was a growth experience. It was something I used. It was a technique I used to win friends and influence people. And by the way, I teach people this in my speaking of courses like you can use humor to engage and empower and and bring people on your side and and to educate i mean you can use humor is um to disarm is a, people yes it's, it's a wonderful tool and and if you happen to have it naturally it's even better and so that's the answer to your question that it, it it's something that has that it came out of a necessity and i didn't even know i had it and who knew that it would earn me money one day? So, and who knew that it would become really rooted in being, it was obviously a gift that just needed to be unpacked or mm-hmm. unpacked. Yep. And then how did you end up going from Brooklyn to LA? Was there a straight path? Well, not straight. Was there a path directly from there yeah. to LA? I'll tell you what it was. It was in living color. 
It was mm. auditioning. I actually went from Brooklyn to the Bronx, married mm-hmm. husband number one. Mm-hmm. I'm currently on husband number two. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll, last, it'll be the last one. I believe so. I really believe. I'm believing that. I'm, I'm claiming it. Claim I want to be We're I'm, grateful for the, him. Gratitude this, for husband number two. I, this is the one I've, I've wanted all my life. Trust mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. So I just wanted to say that I, there was a brief detour to the Bronx, to the boogie down, as we call it. Uh, but what was I saying? So I auditioned for a show called In Living Color. And that was the show that took me to uh, Los Angeles. I probably would not have moved without a job in my back pocket. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was only on the first season of that show. But uh, that then led to everything else you see. So yes. Mm, very nice. So now yeah. you mentioned that you um, help people in sharing their stories and talking about their gifts and all of those things when you do your speaking. And I know you have an event that's coming up October 7th, right? The She Was Made Summit, where you're the keynote speaker in Cincinnati. Is that on your, that's on your schedule, right? It is on my schedule. Okay, I, was like, I was like, October, that's a thousand I know, months. I know, I know. That's why I mentioned it. Like, is that on your schedule yet? <laughs> it is on my schedule. Uh, the That is in Cincinnati on October 7th, and I will be speaking, and I'll be bringing my book, Open Your Gifts, and I I love that stuff. You know, I I would love, like I said before, I would love a TV show, and I hope I get get another one, but there's nothing better than showing up as me, meeting women where they are, and getting a chance to look up on their beautiful faces, tell my story, hear some of their story, and... um, you know, whatever it was I did in that depression to come out of that depression led me to those to the to these events like the She Was Made event in Cincinnati. And it makes me so, so happy. What would you say um, to any women who might be listening who are thinking about acting or who might be in the business now and either, you know, struggling to get that part or making a transition out of acting if they've decided that it's it's not working for them anymore. Just what would you say or maybe even to your younger self in getting into the business? You know, I would say no matter what, stay true to you and and who you are and what your what your personal values are and that your your no's are just as powerful as your yeses mm. and that what is meant for you will be yours. There, there, I really try not to look at too much competition now. And I go like that role was meant for her to have. I, I'm, I'm meant to have what I'm meant to have. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, several things It's number one, stay true to you. Um, know where your yes and no line is and try not to push past it because when you do, you won't be happy. The day that you take something just because of the money will be the day that you just don't, you, you go on, go home and take a long shower after that day because mm. it's just like, it doesn't feel right. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. And if it feels like a hell yes, go do it. And, um, just be authentically you. Like I have survived this business by being authentically me in a, in a business that would tell you, you need to be young, you need to be thin, you need to be this, you need to be that. I have remained Kim Coles mm-hmm. and, and I'm proud of that. And maybe I would have gotten more if I looked like someone else or if I did something to my, my, my body or if I did, maybe, but I got what I got and I am what I am and I'm happy with that. I'm happy with, with that. So be happy with what you have, improve where you need to improve I'm not saying you should just never, you know, try to grow and, you know, um, make changes that you think are really necessary for you to make. Not like I need to get a new nose job because that producer told me my nose was too big. If you think your nose is too big, then do what you got to do. But 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 your nose is perfectly fine. And there are pretty people with big old noses working it. And the next producer will be like, your nose is so small. Let me tell you, let me tell you a story. I was on a show after living single got canceled. I was on a show that only lasted a year. And I remember, you know, we have incredible breaks in show business. Like there's usually a nice break for Christmas. Most sitcoms, at least back then would work. You'd work three weeks on one week off, three weeks on one week off. And I would always use my week off to exercise and try to lose like as much weight as I could in that one week. Mm. And given that Christmas break was coming, I remember talking to someone and the producer overheard me saying like during the Christmas break, I'm really going to just like, you know, 
go on a real strict diet because I can and I'm not going to gorge myself. I'm going to exercise every day. And she stopped me and she said, please don't change yourself for us. We hired you and we love you as you are. If you want to be healthier, if you want to exercise and move your body and feel good about your body, that's on you. But do not change anything about you for us. We love you as you are. And it was so powerful in an industry that has changed so many, so many people have gone through pain. Listen, I was on diet pills when I was on In Living Color because I thought I needed to be thinner. Mm. No one, I don't, no one there told me, but I was told, you know, drop a few pounds by a few people who said, oh, if you're going to be in the business, you're going to need to be thin. And so I, I got myself hopped up on diet pills and it was not fun. And all in me trying to look like something in a in a fast way the way to have done it would have been to eat healthfully and exercise and so I'm saying this to say that there will be people who want to change you and there will be people who will love you as you are and the number one person who is going to love you as you are is you Mm -hmm. so you love upon yourself if you support yourself then the universe will support you what will 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 rise up to meet you. Um, and so, um, I don't know, that's some of the tips I would say, and always do your best, you know, just do your, do your, do your very, very best show up with your a game every chance you, you get, and then you'll never be disappointed. Cause you go, you know what? I gave my best. That's right. And you never know what's coming. Absolutely. I always tell people you can't script it when you ask someone that's done whatever they've done. And you say, what if, did you ever think that you would go through XXX, yeah. X, X. you know, you can never script it, right? No. Now, I, I heard that Queen Latifah is working on a uh, reboot, if you will, of uh, Living Single. Is that, are you in discussions with them about that? Or is that rumor? I, I heard, or wishful thinking for all of us? I, mean, I saw, if you're talking about the interview she did on Andy from Bravo show. Ye- yes. That's mm-hmm. all I know. I mean, I have, I, this is what I tell people. I have been neither contacted nor contracted. Mm. Um, so I've, and I've spoken to all of my other castmates and none of us have heard anything official. Mm-hmm. So I know that she made that announcement and sometimes I'm so mad at her. I'm like, you left the rest of us to answer the question. When's the show coming? So I don't know. Maybe she's planning something different. Maybe she's planning like a reboot with a whole new cast. I have no idea so i'm a little say it again yeah yeah, we'll see what happens for all of us wishing to see it again i i say this i know for sure i would happily return to sinclair and um and do a redo whether it was for a one-shot deal or a couple of episodes and so many shows are doing this listen i just auditioned for the new will and grace they're coming they're coming yeah. back. Isn't it crazy how uh, yep. much of a pioneer that show was, too, at its time? And now it's a perfect time for it to come back. Oh, uh, I'm excited. Yeah. yeah, me too. I'm so excited for them. No, I'm excited for you. Uh, well, I, <laughs> well, I didn't get the role. But the good news is I heard that they did away with the role for now. Like, okay. they just decided, eh, we don't need this. Goodbye. I was like, man, that was my shot. So um, so the answer is I would say yes if there was a living single reboot of some kind. I, there's no official talks or no one has talked to me mm-hmm. about it. Like I said, I don't I don't know. And I, like I said, I just shake my fist every time somebody says that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and that mocking like, oh, that Latifa. Right. <laughs> I'm sure she will call when something is ready to go down. That's I'm sure right. she will. I mm-hmm. believe she's working on it. Let's take a quick break to thank our sponsors. So, you know, as an entrepreneur and especially as a solopreneur, you want to make the best use of your time. And I know for me, with booking guests and having appointments and consultations for Support is Sexy and the podcast, I don't have time to be going back and forth with everybody about scheduling. And that is why I honestly love and use Acuity Scheduling. I've been using it for about a year now, and it has saved me so much time when it comes to booking appointments appointments and guests for the support is sexy podcast in fact i would not be able to do it without acuity scheduling i love it 
and I use it. And I was so happy when I reached out to them and they were excited about supporting the Support is Sexy podcast. And I spoke to Kristen Barber, customer happiness specialist, who tells us about Acuity and a special offer that they have just for Support is Sexy listeners. So normally, if you go to Acuity Scheduling and sign up for a free trial, we have a completely free 14-day trial, no card, nothing. Um, But for all of our lovely Support is Sexy listeners, we are giving you guys 45 days totally free. So if you follow the link that Elaine gives you, you guys can get signed up 45 days, totally free. Check out any plan you want. So the highest one, whatever you need, and we'll just let you know when that's coming to an end. And you can either then put in your card info and keep rocking that account that you're on, or you can even just downgrade to our totally free forever plan. If you don't need some of the major bells and whistles, you can use that puppy completely free for the rest of your life, however you see fit. And that URL is acuityscheduling.com forward slash sexy. That's right. We'll be keeping an eye out for you sexy ladies. Again, that URL is acuityscheduling.com forward slash sexy. So that's A-C-U-I-T-Y scheduling.com forward slash sexy. Make sure you check it out. It's well worth it. A 45-day risk-free trial. And look, we want to make sure that we support the brands that are supporting women entrepreneurs and support is sexy. So check it out at acuityscheduling.com forward slash sexy. And now back to the show. What would you say um, your support network looks like now, Kim? Oh, so I have um, a mother who is just lovely and supports me and, and, and says lovely, positive things all the time. So it looks like my mom and it looks like my old high school girlfriends. I went to Brooklyn Tech downtown. I'm mm. still in my good, good, good girlfriends who I can call on and we take up exactly where we just left off, whether it's two weeks ago or two months ago or two years ago. So I have them and they have my back. I have what I call now these biz besties, these women who are soulful, yummy entrepreneurs. They're so beautiful, each and every one of them. And they don't even know how beautiful they are in the way that they want to. I mean, beautiful on the outside, but more importantly, beautiful on the inside in the way that they want to support and lift each other and share knowledge. You know, I have people who charge thousands of dollars to consult and we'll just get on a FaceTime audio and hash ideas out And so it just looks like that. And then I have my husband who is also so supportive and in a different way. My husband is extremely intuitive and he will give me uh, his feeling on something. Yes, I have a man who's actually a, a, a testosterone filled man who is very in touch with his feelings and he will he's on my side for for. For, for decisions. And I can go to him and say, what do you think of so-and-so? And you'll go, eh, I don't know if that feels right. You know, go ahead and do it, but I'll be here if it doesn't turn out the way you want it to. And so having that support is lovely. It's lovely. <laughs> it sounds lovely. So in closing, Kim, if you think over your life and career and you had the chance to thank only one person whose support was critical to you personally or professionally, who would that be? And what would you say? That's not fair. <laughs> I know well, it's a tough one. Uh, um, I would thank my mother. I would thank my mother. I, 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 not only did I get my sense of humor from her, I got my sense of love from her. She loves people. She loves the world. She loves, um, she has a loving, joyful spirit. So I would say thank you for my loving, joyful funny spirit. Yeah. Thanks, mom. (laughs) Thanks, mom. (laughs) So now tell us how we can support you. I'll have links to the things that we mentioned throughout the episode so people can find it. But so people can hear it, where should they find you social media, anything else you want us to know about? So my website is www dot. Did I say too many W's? (laughs) www three. Yep. Dot (laughs) www dot (laughs) kimholes dot TV. 
My book, my newest book can be found at www.openyourgiftsbook.com. Open your gifts book.com and on social media. I'm Kim calls everywhere except on Facebook. I am real Kim calls because somebody was pretending to be me. Mm-hmm. She had set up a little fake page being Kim calls and they wouldn't let me have it. They wouldn't let me, whatever. I just, I'm like, I'm gonna get around this. I'm just going to be real Kim real calls Kim Cole. and Facebook is where I hang out the most. It's my, it's okay. my jam. It's my okay. jam. Okay. And what else? Um, yeah, I, I, maybe, yeah, that's, that's that. And mm-hmm. I noticed on Facebook, speaking of that, uh, quickly, you mentioned, there was a, the latest video I saw from you, you mentioned that you had a lot of things coming up that you were excited about. Anything in particular that you wanted to share? Or were you talking about the book and the courses and those kind of things? Yes. I was just talking about all of that. I'm, I'm, I'm hosting, um, I'm going back to Brooklyn mm-hmm. next Next week, I'm hosting the LOL Comedy Honors with Bill Bellamy. I'm excited nice. about that. I'm excited to do a book launch in Atlanta. That's right. I'm going to come see you. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, se- in September and October, I've got the ladies in Cincinnati. She was made. And a lots, of, lots of other personal appearance gigs. Um, You're hosting and- a book fair in LA, right? Yes, I'm hosting a book fair this Saturday in the heat. I'm like, oh my goodness, can we just, I'm going to have one of those little fans that you can spritz the water on your <laughs> right, right. You better believe it. It's going to be purple, which is my favorite color. Mm-hmm. And um, lots of other things. I'm going to be relaunching Speak Your Gifts and My Story Is Your Gifts. My Story Is My Gift Soon, which are my courses. And just lots of other things that are brewing. Lots of other things that are brewing. And I'm excited. I'm excited too. Well, Kim, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. I'm glad we were able to make this happen. And just so I acknowledge you just for sharing your story so openly from the very start and really taking us on that journey and telling us how you got through it and how we might be able to do it, too. Yes, ma'am. I'm excited. Thank you so much for the support. Absolutely. Ding, ding, ding. ding. Absolutely. (laughs) Now, before you go, what's a parting piece of advice from you to our listeners about anything? Um, Always just be... I call it being the youiest you mm-hmm. be your authentic, perfectly imperfect self. Everything good has come to me when I just did me and I didn't try to pretend to be anything other than my perfectly imperfect self. You'd be surprised how charming that is, how far that gets you, how brave and courageous you will seem and how much of an anomaly you will be because you're not being like everyone else. You're just being you. The you you. Yes. I love it. <laughs> Kim, more, I think Dr. Seuss. It sounds like Dr. Seuss or Kim exactly. Coles. Either one. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Kim. I so appreciate how open she was with us during that episode. I know it's going to resonate with some of you now. Focus on gratitude no matter how difficult the times get. It sounds like a cliche, but it works for a reason. All right. So to find out more about Kim, about her book and the courses and things that she mentions in this episode, make sure you go to supportisexy.com. Go to the search icon at the top and just type in Kim, K-I-M. Her show notes page will come up with links, resources, and the ways to find out more about what she's up to. Support a sexy podcast.com and just search Kim. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. I'm excited to chat with you again. Until then, always remember, support is sexy and having it all doesn't mean doing it all alone. And I'll chat with you soon. Take care.